I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Yes, we're returning to the cowboy era for today's subject. As the age of cowboys continues to fade from our collective memory, filmmakers strive for a new take on the Old West. Enter then today's subject, Cowboys and Aliens. <laughs> Released in 2011, Cowboys and Aliens is pretty much summed up in its title. An outlaw with no memory and a strange bracer on his arm might be the key to stopping an alien invasion in the Old West. Written for the screen by Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman, alongside Damon Lindelof, and directed by Jean Favreau, could this be the cowboy dream that shot for the stars? Or is it best left abducted? There's only one way to find out! So saddle up, partners. We're headed back to the Old West to find out what happens when cowboys meet aliens in the imaginatively titled Cowboys and Aliens. A man awakes in the dirt, and there's something on his arm. This shall be our hero, for the contraption on his arm holds many secrets. But you'll have to wait a little while for his name, because he doesn't know either. What he does know is how to handle hostile strangers in the wilds, which is where he gets the rest of his outfit. Our hero stops off to clean himself up in someone else's house. This is where we meet Pasta Meacham, played with characteristic charm by Clancy Brown. But when trouble shows up, our protagonist is having none of it. Well, even rough men know what the line is for jerkish behaviour. A lesson for us all which at least gets him a shot of whiskey and a woman's attention. And then the sheriff shows up with our protagonist's name. Jake Lonergan, wanted for robbing a stagecoach, and a lot more besides, including the apparent murder of the woman that he loved. But that particular story will have to wait a little longer. For the moment, he'll face justice in Santa Fe. But Jake Lonergan is wanted by a more powerful force than the law, Woodrow Dollarhide. Former colonel in the US Army, he enters the story here to reclaim his son, Percy, from the arms of the law. Percy shot a deputy while terrorising the saloon owner. But Papa Dollarhide also has a reason to want Lonergan, because it was the Dollarhide stage that Lonergan's gang held up. And even more powerful forces descend on the town, which activates Lonergan's bracer. And he takes one down. And come the dawn, Dollarhide's posse are on the hunt. Those pesky aliens abducted Percy, and the saloon owner's wife, and the sheriff, and a bunch more besides. So that's where our heroes are headed, to find them. So on they ride to an upturned boat. The perfect place to encounter the creature. Lonergan drives it off. But it took out Pastor Meacham. Esteemed viewers, a moment for Pastor Meacham. But there's still the all too earthly matter of bandits to contend with. Lucky for us then that they're Lonergan's gang, or at least they used to be, until Jake ran off with a saloon girl, and one of Jake's former lieutenants ain't too happy about him waltzing back in like nothing happened, but that guy gets bracer blasted, and the rest are scared off by the returning aliens. <laughs> well it looks like the aliens are good for something at least. Ella and Jake are separated from the group, and Ella is wounded. And then the natives show up, just in time for the resurrection of Ella. In fact, Ella isn't actually human. She's from an entirely different race of aliens that were all but wiped out by the same bunch that our heroes are fighting. The Shirakawa tribe restore Lonergan's memories, but pleasant memories they are not. You see, Jake rode back to his lady love with his share of the stagecoach robbery loot. She was none too happy with the stolen gold, but before she could argue, 
The gold was melted and sucked away by the aliens, and the pair were captured. They were going to be cut up for study, but instead she was burned to a crisp, and he grabbed an alien bracer and held off his captor long enough to escape the ship, finding his way to safety via a network of underground caves. As I say, it's a pretty miserable set of memories. They do lead our heroes to the alien ship though, and so the stage is set for our finale. Dollarhide's posse distract the aliens, while Jake and Ella head into the caverns. Ella frees the prisoners, and Jake takes out the demons. But Ella's final mission is to destroy the ship and stop these creatures. And so our movie ends with Jake Lonergan, free of his troubles, riding off to new adventures. Free of his troubles, that is, because Dollarhide and Sheriff Taggart would swear blind that Jake Lonergan died fighting the aliens. Anyway, that was Cowboys and Aliens. A decent film to be sure, but I can't put this one into my house of love. Westerns are a man's world. Might makes right and the gun makes rightest of all. You gotta be a tough guy to survive out there. And this film doesn't shy away from the grit of that concept. It's dirty, dusty, occasionally bloody, and certainly pig-headed. But is it any good? Well, they've certainly assembled a stellar cast, first off. Daniel Craig, a stoic anti-hero. Harrison Ford, cast as someone who really would shoot first. And it's been a while since we've reviewed a movie featuring Sam Rockwell, but his doc is the counterbalance that kinda makes it work. A sane man in a savage west. Plus, of course, Olivia Wilde, who is more than she appears, and gives it her doe-eyed all. But this is a man's movie for certain, and it's certainly more western than sci-fi. Bravado and heartbreak rub shoulders, and Noah Ringer's Emmett is expected to grow up fast. And while there are more tender moments, for the most part it's when someone dies in someone else's arms. Throughout all of this though, you can't fault the effects as the unnamed aliens look sufficiently alien. Wordless, chitinous, gold-craving invaders. Though their design is fundamentally flawed when they must expose their hearts to use their inner arms. Which might be symbolic, but don't quote me on that. None of which answers the question of whether or not this movie is any good. Well, I'm no fan of westerns, but I'd say that this one makes for a good enough western. Not so much as a sci-fi movie, though. And if you're a fan of westerns, I'd certainly recommend giving it a watch. But again, it doesn't have to be for me, and I've made my peace with that. Well, there you have it then. For what it's worth, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better movies. So long, partners! Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!